Hello. Hello. There Hi. we are. So nice to see you, every, all of uh, you today again. I'm still a little bit under stress because of the topic of today. <laughs> not not really because of the topic of today, but because of the matter. And uh, it is still something very, let's say, uh, how can I put it? It is a little bit disturbing at the moment. So we are a company and we decided several years ago, not, not too many, I think four years ago, that PWA is a good idea because Apple now supports it as well. Well, it doesn't do anymore like that. So it is a little bit like a very awkward situation for us at the moment. And um, luckily, and this is what I've wrote in my newsletter, was that um, we were luckily not using too many of native APIs. So we have a chance to continue with, with our apps in our business. So this is the reason why I'm actually a little bit, yeah, I can smile still. But uh, I, I assume that many of you aren't able to smile right now um, who are using PWAs. And um, don't get me wrong, I, I make no, no, no jokes about that. It's a very serious situation. Um, I haven't slept a lot in the, la in, in the past uh, in the past days. I'm pretty done, actually. <laughs> and um, I, I just want to um, help you today a little bit in the first half an hour to get an overview of what's actually going on, um, how I understand it, how we solve our problems here. So we have one week left, right, before the update is hitting us, and how we actually deal with that. This is what we're going to do in the first half an hour, and the rest we're going to do some PWA stuff. So we, we, we code something, we create a little feature, we bring it online and take a look how it works. V very freestyle. Uh, I wanted to prepare more, but um, I hope you don't mind that we've put the time into different things. So we will do that in, in a private project of mine, which is the same tech stack as we use, um, basically the very same tech stack as we use it for real apps. Um, but we will just take a look. So it's uh, basically like that. Uh, but I just started to talk right now. I'm happy to see so many people today online. That's quite cool. Um, it's actually a record. I just see there's a record. Yeah, I think so. We have uh, nearly 50 people online. This is yeah. still, I don't know. 40-ish 40 40 on LinkedIn. Five I should, I should, I should more often um, uh, cancel and postpone my streams. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't think that's the contributing factor here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Camilla, so it's nice to have you back. Yep. Um, you're back from travels, so <laughs> you've been missed. Yes, have a journey. Any, um, any agenda topics that we should cover, or should we jump straight in, Adrian? Um, Maybe because we have quite a lot of people online today and just started talking like a maniac. So maybe um, maybe you, you, you introduce yourself uh, in just uh, 30 seconds each. Camilla, go ahead. Oh, go okay, sorry. I was about to drink coffee. Um, <laughs> I am a software engineer and I'm actually a junior software engineer. I've been working for a year now and I come here to give a bit of my perspective as a junior engineer and all of these great topics that I think everyone should start just taking a look at. Even if you think you're not ready, you're ready. You should just start. So that's my two cents here. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm a, I'm Dennis. I'm a coach. I coach leaders, um, tech leads, engineering leads, engineering managers, DPEs are people who want to get there on craftsmanship and leadership skills. So I basically help teams de-stress and regain their confidence. That's sort of been my forte for the past year. And Adrian and I have been streaming along these topics, mostly where it touches on engineering culture. You can find me on LinkedIn and the, my main one-on-one -on -one mentoring platform, which is MentorPlus. We will be posting links later. Adrian, what about you? Anything change? Did your title change in the last few weeks? <laughs> uh, no, I'm more basically, um, my, my title is now victim of Apple. Um, <laughs> prisoner and how, how is it mark calling the gap the great apple prison so i still use a mac and i'm happy about that but um i'm a little bit like like the political things they do right now are, aren't very pleasant so yes i'm still I, i'm still what i i was before so um you know um, entrepreneur cto 
helping small to medium sized businesses, having my own business as well and doing those things because it's my passion for so many years now. And um, yeah, so I think that's it. So later on, we can um, we can talk a little bit more about that. And I will quickly jump into my latest uh, article from because I haven't announced it on LinkedIn. I wasn't very, let's say, very um, active this week on LinkedIn. But let me quickly show you, you were that one. Um, so it should be large enough now. So mm -hmm. I was talking about the following. So are progressive web apps dead? Um, and and the, the reason I asked this question for, to myself so, so many times was um, what, what Apple actually did is taking away in, in the European Union, only in the European Union right now, is taking away the capability of installing the app. Um, so adding it to the home screen. And we need to be clear about that. It's still possible to install the PWA via service worker, but it's not, you are not able to put them onto the, um, into the desktop anymore or the, or the home screen anymore. And the complication with that is not really that you just don't have full screen. The problem is you don't have access uh, to, an, to, to the app version of your of your PWA actually, which means that you don't have access to things like web push and you probably don't have um, the, uh, let's say, the, the how can I put it? Um, the you're permissions in the for limited, the, You're in a more limited yeah. sandbox. It is a limited sandbox, right? And yeah. the problem with that is that when we started with PWAs, we basically blocked our apps um, to not be able to run it in a browser. So you needed to have it standalone. So you got a pop up and it told you how you can install the app because Apple never provided any JavaScript API for this. So you need to tell the people where to click and how to put it on your um, at home screen. Then, and that was the point for us, suddenly you have a decent quota for local storage and your data is not, not just get randomly deleted on some point in time because it is basically um, then persisted. And uh, there were other things like um, the, the rate where you can store into index DB was greatly enhanced and those things they actually haven't documented but they, they become became a problem. Um, luckily, and this is this is I think written in the article as well, a little down there. I, I on Sunday, this Sunday, I put a lot of time into this uh, into into this uh, thing of testing how we can run the PWA in our browsers actually still, so that we can keep the business up and running, which is quite important for everyone who does have a PWA right now running, and it is for us luckily possible to run the app because we only use camera we only use local storage we don't use our um, file system anymore because it was broken anyway some some month ago so we we ditched it um so um uh, the core remains so actually yeah you can read it i, I posted the link um, i posted as well the open web advocacy i highly recommend to fill out the forms there um as actually, uh, so so if you have a PWA running and you want to describe it, please put it inside um, that uh, um, a survey they have, and they will basically uh, put it to Apple or actively doing it right now to show Apple how many people are actually using PWAs right now. We and our clients already did that, so um, I just ask you to do the same. I quickly give it to you in order that you don't have that already. Um, good. So this is done as well. And now I stop uh, sharing and uh, going into the matter again a little bit. So um, what were the two two ways we actually um, try to solve the problems we have currently? So we're doing two things at the same time. First of all, we need to make sure that on the day when the first update hits a real phone, that we still can you know, work with our PWAs. This is the highest priority. For me, it is the highest priority. I don't really think we can change a lot until so because Apple already well, done well, that. What happens to the iPhone iOS users who don't update their OS? They can still use it, actually. Um, hmm. I but only for assume. a limited amount of time, I think. I mean, yeah, because you're forced. You have to update. Mm -hmm. You're forced to update, correct? Yeah. Exactly. And then the problem is, and this is for now everyone to understand, on iOS, PWAs 
in the installation process to the device are working a little differently on uh, than like on Android, for example. If you install or add to home screen, um, then there's basically a new instance created from your local storage, which means the app version does have a local storage differently from the browser version. This is mm -hmm. different in Android. You have the same one just opened differently, you know. So what does this mean now? So since you cannot access the old PWA anymore, um, because it doesn't open as a PW anymore, so it is the browser version, you don't have access anymore, all the data you've created in that app, including logins, uh, data you've created, data you've collected, everything is basically gone. So for many, let's say, apps, this might not be a big of an issue, you just you know, log in, you get back the data, but especially you might be synchronizing it to somewhere else. Or exactly. Of it. This is this is there. There were some parts in our app where we actually collect data with the apps. So locally in offline in even where you don't have any Internet connection and then it got sync get synchronized back to mm -hmm. the service. And we need to be like um, we need to make sure that all clients synchronize the entirety of the data before the update so that we are safe in this case. So this is one of the things uh, everyone should think about uh, making um, that, that the local storage is gone. It is away. So if you have anything stored on your device, if you have an offline first application, make sure you have a stable server thing. Um, yeah, stable server thing. Camilla's gone. Um, I, I've seen that before. That's just her hitting refresh or the back button on the browser. <laughs> okay. um, but this this is what you really should uh, take care of is um, She's back. the local storage. <laughs> Hello. And um, if you have things like web push. Can we push, put because... you back on stage? Sorry. Can we put you back on stage? <laughs> Hi. Okay. Um, so if you have something like web push, um, so this, this was the big thing last year, right? When, when mm -hmm. iOS was um, allowing to use the web push API. Yeah. Um, so if you have implemented something like that, and I got actually several mails already um, from people, from business owners who have this um, PWA thing with Web Push as one of their core capabilities, you need to make quickly some 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 decision to if this is necessary for your company to survive in any way, like 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 that, there will be basically no chance or no hope that this will still work. Because this mm -hmm. is not working in the browser. As far as I know, um, there is no way to, to get that done. I saw several people trying that in the beta and they were not able to use push notifications or a push, which means that the, now we're coming to the second thing is instead of preparing your application to, to be able to run in the browser, which is not an app anymore, but it's just a website which is acting like an app. It's not as nice anymore. But the second option, and this is what we do as well, is in parallel, we going into the App Store. I, I don't like that. So first of all, mm -hmm. the, 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 the initial idea of the PWA was to not go into the App Store. Yeah. Um, and we because doing you don't benefit from it, right? Because no, we you don't. don't it's it. just an yeah. overhead. It is, um, it's, it's it, a free app. It's a SaaS business, probably. So it's, yeah. it's, a, free, it's a free UI for a service that somebody's already paying for for the web version, right? Yeah. So they expect there to be like a free iPhone app or a comp yeah. complementary iPhone app. Because the the, the point is um, in 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 inside. So so the general. I quickly go technically and then why. Mm -hmm. um, so technically, it's like you you use something like capacitor. This is in our case. We used that before already. Um, mm -hmm. You you use something like capacitor. You package your web app into or your PWA into that one and it runs inside basically an iOS container, if you like that, um, with uh, WebKit WebView, which is basically then installed in, in, the, in the same version as you pack it or package it actually. And um, this is then still working because this is the non-EU version as far as I can see. So we're testing that right now, but it looks mm -hmm. like that. So with, which means that you can still run a PW in a full screen inside the App Store. So this is still possible, um, it, as it looks like. So why do I don't like that? Um, is um, the, the the big thing for our clients was that they were actually in the very beginning they were skeptical. They were saying, 
what I, I don't install an app by going onto a website, right? Or you, um, I just get a link. I, I need to go to the app store. I need to download it. I need to update it. And on some point, they got to used to it and said, oh, this is so great. I can use the same app on my computer, on my phone, on my other phone. And it's just a link. I can just share things and the the, 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 the business owners or the, the administrators can send links to others and they can directly open it in their version without needing to open this in the app or something like this. And this is actually a great thing. The same thing like we saw on Spotify, where Spotify noted that they made over 30% more revenue in the first year of using a PWA instead of a yeah. uh, instead of only a, a same, um, with same, same with Airbnb, same with all the other services where it's just easier to where, where, so the, the use case is primarily small medium business or an enterprise that has a free to use app. And the monetization happens some in some way mm -hmm on the platform or in the browser or in some secondary secondary yeah. transaction. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so why, why is the reason then we go with that approach? Because if it is possible for us to stay in the browser version and let's hope that PWAs are suddenly possible again after two or three months, because in reality it was more of a technical issue, hopefully. I still hope mm -hmm. that, that they package it something like that or some the web accuracy just do something i don't know so maybe we get that but we need to have something in in between something in meanwhile and um let's say it is a little bit like like what spotify as an example was doing as well they have an app in the app store and this is the very basically the very same app it is if you compare that just open your your app on for example uh i have spotify from the app store and uh, on my Mac, on the, the web version, they are exactly the same. So it is basically a PWA packed in some form of container. I don't know exactly how. And this is the same what we do as well. So as, mm -hmm. as soon as we see that, um, that, that PWAs are working again on iOS, we probably go away again from the installed version. And um, this, this is how, how we handle this. But um, yeah, I know we are at the moment a little bit about, hey, we need to do something against and blah, blah, blah. Um, what I think is we should think positively that, that something will change because so many people are standing up and say, hey, let's go. We, we need to do this. We need to have PWAs. PWAs are the future. They are a great idea. Everyone does have a browser. Everyone can use a PWA. There is no reason to not allow those apps to, to live. Um, but, but we need to save our businesses. So I think many of the viewers today are here because they have businesses and huge problems and they need to find solutions. And I only can recommend, don't care if you go into the app store right now, because what you do now is first of all, save your business, save your employees and make sure that your users don't go away. This is the first thing you need to make sure. And then we go and try to save PWS. We won't save, probably we won't save, or we should not bet on that PWS are suddenly in 70.4 available. If they are, lucky all of us, right? This is great. Mm -hmm. Let, let's celebrate this. Um, and, and thanks. I don't know. Thanks, God. I don't know. But I, I, don't, I doubt that it happens. So we need to make sure that we are prepared for everything. And putting an app into the capacitor, as, as long as it fulfills the requirements of Apple, how an app in the App Store should look like, then it is not a big process. But if you want to do this, if you consider this right now, go and create an Apple developer account today, because it takes, first of all, a little bit of time until you get this account done. Then you need to prepare your application to actually pack it. Then you need to fulfill the requirements of Apple. You and then you, you need, need to, to wait vetted. for the review process. To, to run. Yeah, you need to be vetted and you're very first, you're very first review your pilot review process takes a little bit longer than the rest. So exactly. So if you want to have that, make sure you start today with the approach. And even if you don't do that, because hey, great, everything is running again in one week, then you can stop it. But if you if you have nothing like that, you can't go on. But if you use it inside the app, you can still use web push, you can still use everything you want to have, 
even a little bit more because you still have the capacitor wrapper where you can use a bridge and do a little bit more. And it's still a PWA, but it's let's say the PWA is running in an isolated container, in an app container, but not in your actual browser. So this makes it different, but it's still, let's say, a form of PWA you use. And I, I would I would straight recommend this for everyone who is in dire need of having some solution. Okay, good. Now I have, I think this was actually the stuff I wanted to, to, to say today. Do we have any questions regarding this topic so far so in the audience? We have a few audience members whose chat is not coming through to StreamYard. So uh, if you have your privacy settings turned up to the maximum, we can see. Um, so. We have a backup screen for that, but we can't put it on your on the screen. Uh, so far, we got a lot of hellos. I asked a bit. Uh, I posted a question in chat regarding uh, for those of you who are live. You know, did the Apple PWA changes in the EU affect you? Right. So this is the this is the policy change with DMA, um, mm -hmm. and it's odd to me, right? Because the DMA says that there needs to be sort of non sort of some kind of show of effort for non-monopolistic tendencies on the on the major axes regarding you know large social networks large marketplaces large browsers etc etc platforms how come how come apple removing pwas makes it more dma friendly not less Right, because if I'm thinking about it from the perspective of compliance, if I can have apps from the App Store and apps from the PWA, wouldn't that make it more DMA friendly? What am I missing here? The PWA is actually this is this is what I saw several times on LinkedIn as well. Is actually the way to fulfill DMA. Let's say. Um, more like the original idea of it. Yeah. So yeah. open it, make it free. I mean, but, if Apple uh, wanted to follow DMA to the letter, they would have PWAs, right? Only PWAs, actually. Only, because if, only if it, PWAs. Because PWA is, PWA is, let's say, the most open version we can use of an app. Agreed. Um, that makes sense. So, so, so why are they removing it? That is why actually the original idea of Steve Jobs, not why to, fall, are they not to forget it. In the EU to comply with DMA, <laughs> if that's the solution. The, the, the point <laughs> is, um, why, why I'm still thinking, this is what, what I was writing in the article as well, is I don't think that PWAs are dead because the EU isn't that large. It is like yeah, most, not even all devices. devices. It is. Yeah. It, it is. It is only the devices which can be tracked back to the EU in the EU, yeah. which are affected. So um, let's say something around seventy to eighty percent of all iOS devices are still capable of using PWAs. So my simulators are still working. Everything is working fine. So. Um, I personally, this is the we had that in the last stream where we we're talking about that on, on my on my news one as well. I am yep. still yep. thinking there is a technical issue as well. So there is something to it that um, that that it is not easy. So they basically remove the underlying WebKit implementation and make it open for everyone. And it would be okay if it's a technical solution as a technical comp let's say complexity, and they can't solve it maybe uh, just in a matter of time. But then why not? Why, why shouldn't they they just tell it right i don't know um i am just hoping this is still the hope which is speaking out of me right that uh, we just get, get getting a fix with a 17.5 and suddenly you can edit to home screen again so we have some uh some some comments right shall we go through them yeah mm, yeah hello well, hang on i just i just want to address the people whose chat we missed hi grant hi jeff Hi, Mohammed. Hi, April. Um, hi, Michael. Hi, Kaloyan. Uh, hi, Raul, Miguel. A lot of our regulars. Shiva, mm -hmm. Rasul. It's great. We have a growing audience of OTJ and PWA enthusiasts. So, from what I know, Apple, you know, and Let's address the first question. Mohammed asks, is the availability limitation also about the local storage inside an iframe? Are there more micro front ends on this way? Oh, um, never thought about that because the PWA is, so there is no PWA in the question. So um, 
I think it refers directly to how, how Safari is or WebKit is doing yeah, that right yeah. now. Yeah, um, so the a, PWA it's a, itself... It's the browser it's a, sandbox. It is not a PWA topic because uh, you wouldn't use a PWA in an iframe uh, because mm -hmm. it's meant to be standalone, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in, in context, I, I can't tell you really the, 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 the answer. I don't know it. Um, if the iframe is on a different domain and there are some security concerns there, then the local storage cannot access it cross frame. I used to work in ad tech, so we usually had like I was an expert on yeah, cross frame. Cr cr yeah, cross frame, but cross -frame inside frame. the frame. The point is inside the frame. I don't know. So actually, I would say, this is... I would say inside the iframe it would work, but it wouldn't be a full PWA. Like the, the, the full PWA to have access to any kind of sandbox, even if it's pre DMA, post DMA, would have to be the top level container. Uh, so if mm -hmm. you're running an iframe and it's in a different subdomain, uh, I would say that's that's going to be an issue. And I'm not I'm not sure exactly which limitation Mohammed is referring to because there's quite a few that might be that might be relevant here. Um, Mohammed, First if you is, want to follow up with us, uh, let one us one is quota and the other is persistence. Mm -hmm. But if you run it in an iframe, you are definitely. Um, not not a first-class citizen. You are definitely yeah. under the circumstances of a website, and okay. there you have lower quota, and you don't have data persistence. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so it was one year ago like this. So I was still finding out. I was surprised to see in the simulator in the website that I had 300 gigabytes of quota. Mm -hmm. um, I was used to something between started with 50 megabytes, then it went up to um, 500 megabytes, I think. And now, I don't know. So maybe we are lucky here and those limitations are not anymore. I don't know. We'll take a look. April says hi. Hello. Hello. Good morning, April. <laughs> Another parent. Yeah. I see, I, see we have a, I see we have a growing audience of parents. <laughs> 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 Shout out to all those parents who are making these streams. Having these streams <laughs> during <laughs> afternoon, dinner time, lunch time, breakfast. Uh, Jeff shared a link with us for the DMA. Thank you, Jeff. Isabel, Isabel Lurken asks, so PWA is web-based apps and they want to use mobile apps first instead? Um, so Can you give us a quick intro on what, what a PW is in the context of an iPhone? Just oh, yeah. quick. So um, a PWA in general is a let's say a pimp website uh, a website in that sense that you actually can use your underlying browser to display it without any browser controls mm -hmm. um, and it does have additional access to specific web apis like push notifications like background sync so when you basically turn off your phone uh, not turn off your phone but um, you know close your browser uh, or have it in background there are still tasks working in the background for synchronization purposes something like that so those things are only available if you are running it in the let's say stand let's call it standalone mode yeah? yeah full screen mode standalone mode pwa mode this is when you have installed it onto your device and this is first of all the pwa um, it is a mobile app so the point is, this is the terminology here is not 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 slight, not correct. So uh, what we what we what we make a diff the difference is that we can use a mobile app as a PWA or a native app. So when we put something into the store, we call it in, uh, basically a device native app, and the PWA is the web native app. So there is a web nativeness as well. So it's basically um, you can but both run that on, on a real app on your device. And this is the problem right now we're talking about. Apple doesn't want to have several ecosystems or let's say it is fighting every ecosystem possible, which is not the Safari or WebKit ecosystem or the own ecosystem, actually. And uh, this is the actual problem here, right? Um, so yes, a PWA is a web-based app, but it's a mobile app as well. So if you have installed it as a PWA, it, it is a real app. So there is no difference. If I just install Spotify and Spotify on the same phone, uh, one time with a web-based app, one time with the App Store app, and I just show it to a person who does not know about those things, will not see a difference. Even and I this... have Spotify installed on my phone. I just checked as a web, as a as a PWA and as a app, and I can't tell the difference. You know, the icon is the same, the functionality is the same. So yeah, because open, it is the same app, it is just differently right? packed, it is, right? It is the same app, yeah. So if you go to open.spotify.com, that is the PWA. 
And the difference is that um, the PWA on your phone. So it's basically you go to the website and you add it as a bookmark to your desktop. Let's let's quickly yeah. let's quickly show what what happens on. Um, okay. Uh, share yeah, your demo. To download and see directly how it feels because it's basically the same. Mm -hmm. We have a new. I mean, it's not here. the same sure. if you're if you, if you're coming from the iOS ecosystem. It's not the same in the terms that when you install an app, that app uh -huh. is involuntarily or benevolently linked to your no. App Store account. How is your oh, UI? Yeah. So so there are rules in regards to how payments are done in any app that is installed through the App Store. In that mm -hmm. it is encouraged mm. or lately, in some cases, enforced, especially mm. when children are concerned, da. that mm. payments are handled through the App Store account, not through yeah. any kind of third party payment systems that might be running inside a browser, inside a web view, a WebKit view, WebKit UI, inside yeah. the installed iOS app. Right, so there are some rules that come into play, even if your app is free and it's a bundled PWA, when it comes to uh, going through the App Store route, which is why PWAs yeah. were such a such a favorite. If you didn't have that necessity, if you didn't need some kind of Apple platform, if you didn't need access to to iCloud, if you didn't need access to any kind of other linked services that you would, if you if you don't have a macOS specific app, um, yeah. you know, so something like. For example, a very good candidate for an iOS app would be a productivity tool, like some kind of note note taking tool that can leverage the iCloud iCloud services to sync your data from your iPhone to your Mac to your iPad, because it might yeah. be running on all of them. So it's using the Apple ecosystems to sort of share data between them and to um, share data in, in between them natively in a much better way than you could through the web, even yeah. on even even in a capacity that is peer to peer on your local network where you are online but not on the internet and then the data doesn't escape your private network on a pwa it, it's only it's web based so the so the app yeah. actually lives on a domain but it can operate uh it can operate in an offline mode but it has this connection to the mothership to the domain to the main domain name which is the website which is a web based tld mm -hmm. domain and well, what I want to quickly wanted to show you. Do you can you see my screen? Um, it yeah. would help if you would increase the font size to the degree that it makes sense that you can still show what you want to show us. I think I have done that, right? So yeah, can I you think see? It's my, it's my well, what we now. see uh, first of all, we see here my my music preferences. Give us a give us a <laughs> one in chat, please. <laughs> if if the font size is okay. Okay, so I don't, I don't think I, I, I see it on the, on the, on the other screen. It looks good, so it's, it's readable, or okay. isn't it? Yeah, it is read. My, my, my oh <laughs> God! So. Oh, the echo. <laughs> no, um. So I, it just started to, to. So, so what we see here on the right hand side is very interesting. We see a service worker here. When you go on application and then service worker in your mm -hmm. favorite Chromium browser to develop. Um, you get this overview if you're this this indicates that you probably are going into the direction of a PWA Actually, the service worker is a must-have so it is not a hundred percent indication for a PWA But we, we see here is a service worker which tries to update which means it already downloaded a new version And it's ready to run the update which means I'm working on this iteration of the service worker and I want uh, then the the, 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 the service worker is waiting to update. If I would reload the page, it would already use the new one, or I can do skip waiting. This, you can do this with uh, JavaScript as well. And um, if I now skip away, then the, the website is basically reloading and I got the new version. There's something new as well now, so dismiss. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I can unregister that one and reload it again, and it would now reinstall itself. Um, and when this is installed, then the offline capability is there. But removing the service worker is not deleting the local storage. So if everything inside here, I don't know exactly how, how Spotify is handling that, all, all that kind of stuff here, but this is not affected like this. This is an interesting work um, workbox. They're using um, Workbox. This is a Google thing for caching strategies with a service worker that you can here see what's actually cached. It is a little bit small, but inside here you have all get queries cached. 
mm-hmm. um, so that you actually can run. Let's just try it sure out. Adrian, Adrian, you're sharing your login on Spotify. Just make sure you don't dox yourself by leaking a authentication key from the network. Oh, great. It's not offline capable. Yeah, anyway, so this is um, this is just um, an example. So when we take a look now at the app, so this is um, basically the very same app as you can use it on the um, on on the devices uh, on on the app store as well, and we see that more and more often going on right now um, in the internet. So as Dennis already mentioned, several other Airbnb or this kind of stuff, and many in the audience today probably the do is, the same the as well. Is, the point is, it is so seamless that you probably didn't know that you're using APWA. If 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 you open an app through a QR code and then they said at the bookmark or, or at the at the home screen, you probably didn't even know that you were installing a PWA. It's just an icon that appeared in your your, your phone. It it just clicks in your head. That, okay, I have this app now. You probably forgot that you never installed it through the app store, um, especially if you're on an Android as well. You know, then it's even more seamless. So it, it's very it's very quick to forget that not everything on the iPhones so far had to go to the app store. And it's possible you use a lot of applications like that uh, without being aware, without you, you are, without you understanding that there is such a thing that has the acronym PWA, Progressive yeah. Web App. Okay, um, so this was a, a little bit of uh, how what, what an act PWA is. So um, you would be surprised how many PWAs are actually currently in use, and. Um, lose the capability. So first of all, a PWA can be used in browser. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> What's going but, uh, but, you know, it is like, um, you can use your PWA. So it's like Spotify just in the browser. So especially when you use it just on Android, it mm-hmm. you, do, you don't really have limitations there. So um, yep. this is that that feels actually quite okay as well. We, we're using StreamYard uh, for 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 that kind of stuff, it does the same. It records everything into the IndexedDB, the database we just showed, and mm-hmm. then it uploads it um, step by step, uh, while uh, even with background sync. So that's that's quite interesting stuff, to be honest. And and Calvin has a point. Before the App Store launch and the advent of iOS, PWAs were the default apps, right? So the, the main mm-hmm. apps you had on your phone were bookmarks to home pages, and those were the first sort of mm-hmm. three. Before the term PWA was invented, you had these sort of offline pages where you had manifest files for the website, and then any website that had a manifest file, you know, it would have an icon. That's where the whole uh, Retina compatible icons came from, because you usually, up until that point, a website required a, a, t- a top-level domain, a domain name, a registrar, and a fab icon. That's it. And and maybe a robots TXT to, to really... <laughs> To really round up what you would need it for a top for a, for a domain for a purchase domain, and then from then on you also needed to have all of the open cloud uh, the open data uh, the open graph sorry um, information for social networks so that it, it has a preview it has a description SEO stuff keywords for search engines uh, and then also manifest files and PWA information for what does this look like on that on a on a mobile device. What is the preferred orientation in which it launches? Does it does it launch by default full screen? Is it offline capable? Does it have a service worker? If there is a service worker, to what domain name does the service worker respond to? If it does have a service worker, does the service worker respond to push notifications to show something on you know to show like a one or something or a, a exclamation mark on the on the app if you're on, if you're on Android? That's the whole point. Like that that evolved prior to the App Store launching on iOS, which is, which is, you know, which predates a lot of iOS users' history with yep. the, the Apple market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's quickly go yeah. for you the next show the demo? You want to, if you can show the demo, I'll, I'll go to the questions real quick. Um, oh, yes, uh, demo, right? We wanted to do yeah, something. Yeah, you, you can prep the no, demo. Not really demo. We, we need to, uh, we need to, uh, we need to distill, define what we do. <laughs> okay. I, I just have a tech stack. There's no demo yet. Yeah, you said you had a hard stop before six, so we have like a good hour to, to do something practical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's be agile about it. Um, we had a question from somebody on LinkedIn. Uh, what is the actual small term cost to bring also uh, the only one mobile app? And later on to the second one, for example, a native app with a browser to serve their their 
PWA. So if I understand the question correctly is, if you were to wrap your already existing uh, PWA or some kind of web app into anything from Electron, Ionic, mm -hmm. um, some kind of other equivalent, um, is there a tech stack cost, labor cost, license cost? Like what's the you need, bottom line? You, you need to hybrid? pay for the developer accounts, at least at Apple. Um, okay. mm -hmm. you, can in, you can upload your PWA into the Play Store of Google as a TWA, with this, which is a trusted web activity, not a trusted web app, it is a trusted web activity. And uh, this will be straightly uh, so tested automatically and converted into a native app. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically the app wrapper stuff, you don't need to, to create uh, APKs anymore by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the, it is only like when you want to so have you don't need rich to sign components. Them. Like that's the, that's the harder part. Like you can create an APK, but you don't need to sign them from a, tr a trusted distributor on the app store. Probably, yeah. Because but in 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 in, uh, in iOS, you need to package yourself still, and yeah. you need to uh, need put, push it need into a, review, right? And you need Xcode for that, and you need to have a key for that, and a license, and a Mac. But I, I don't know anything about any cost <laughs> about that. You know, uh, I think I mean, the, cost uh, the, is the hardware itself probably. You need a Mac Studio or a Mac Mini or something equivalent to actually spin up development environment. Um, but you can rent those as well. I think there's a lot of shops that do that for you, if you're if you if you're doing it once. Um, you know, but, but you should you should sort of take care of that on a regular basis if you're serious about running iOS development. Yeah. Again, depends on like on which side you are here. Yeah. If you're doing a web app, maybe maybe you maybe you you can go more web and less PWA if that's viable for you. Um, yeah. For example, the original Gmail app was a PWA because. <laughs> Apple really didn't want to put them into the App Store for a very long time. So they just basically went all in into the PWA technology uh, way before it got standardized. Uh, and then it and th then it was basically sanctioned by Apple and then it became one of the default suggested apps to install once you have iOS because almost everybody uses Gmail. <clears throat> um, Raul has a question. Do you think mm -hmm. uh, Apple believes the users affected are too little or just a tech issue? They're probably not willing to address now. Mm. So uh, let's say, I mean, we, we're talking about very large <laughs> apps, I, I, you know? I, I, I see Apple do this thing to, to sort of extend on Rose's question. Do you think there's going to be like a opt out of this limitation somewhere hidden in the settings? Because we no. see Apple do that a lot, right? So they they have a preferred way, and then it's regulation, and then somewhere deep in the settings, there's an opt out for that. Um, so the feature flag would... for the future, maybe. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. To be honest, um, Apple has released a very long file. You can read it online. I don't have the link right now, but uh, it is basically they they explained what they've changed, and the entire PWA stuff is there as well. But they don't call it PWA. It's like oh. Uh, home app something experience um it's not an experience anymore but um uh let's say they are very wishy-washy about the reasons and it's all about security uh, and i ask myself why they just don't provide secure apis then to make it so google is doing the same for years right now and and this is um let's say no problem at all there i never heard of that you actually can crack with your PWA any system on your Android phone. I never heard about that. Okay. Uh, that that would be a security issue and a problem of the device. So why should that be possible on iOS? This is this is just their explanation um, of how they open it. And this is this was my initial idea of why they block it. Um, because they probably have tech, um, technology issues. So it's basically a, a, a technical issue to implement the DMA in a form that is actually okay. And they basically cover it up as a um, security issue. Um, maybe it is a security issue in their current state of tech, right? In, in their implementation, that's, that's possible. But as I said at the beginning, just tell that to the people. And it's like, um, then it, because 
if really, let's say, let's, let's be honest about that. If Apple wants to get rid of PWAs, they could have just done it already. Mm -hmm. It is just remove it or never let it. So well, why so some some month ago? Well, they, I, I they, have they, the they, link. Let's let's begin. Let's begin at the beginning. I have the link. So here's the link. <laughs> here's the link. OK, so here's the link. And Apple is not like killing PWAs before, because they want to kill PWAs. The thing that Apple is doing till March 8th is they are allowing alternative marketplaces. So you can't have PWAs anymore, but you can install an iOS app not from the original App Store. Yeah. But it still has to be a binary, a signed binary. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to go through the monetization loop of, you know, I, Apple wants to basically charge you a dollar on every dollar spent in the in the App Store. They, they basically tax you for using the platform. And the EU said there should be some way around that. Uh, and there was a, a way around that in PWAs. And now that they are forced to have binary distribution as well, they said, okay, we'll allow the binary distribution, but we'll ditch the PWAs because now we don't want to support that many. I think at least if I'm steel manning their case, that's the most generous interpretation that I can put on it, other than them sort of showing the middle finger to the EU um in disagreement or in protest um so there are quite a few new frameworks quite a few new apis for non-safari mm -hmm. browsers so they are sort of evening out sort of leveling out the playing field for what a p what a formal pwa could have done and what other ios apps can be um put on the the the, the, the device and also access to the whole native libraries, which are not web compliant, which is usually um, stuff like access to your um, to your private camera, right? So if you have multiple cameras to, to that setting, to the hardware settings of the camera, to the contactless payment, you know, like the, the, the double click thing on the side of the phone that, that didn't have a native uh, web, web API. Uh, so those are coming. Now, in what form? I haven't read through this entire thing. But what I'm curious about is that what, why is it, you know, why is it that PWAs are being killed in the EU? If they're, I know that that's not a fair question, but w w what is, what is the strategy here? Of Apple? Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand it to be honest. So for me, it's I also a don't technical it. problem. Yeah, so I, so I, 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 I'm happy that we <laughs> agree in our not understanding. Um, it is, a, of course, we can. There, there's a big notion out there. There's a lot of bashing going on, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and I, I personally think that Apple could have done several years before something out of own motivation, but okay. refused to do so. And now the EU was basically forcing them because it's a viable market for them and they need mm -hmm. to follow to do something in very short amount of time. And if you are a software developer and you know that you need to change your entire thing in a very short amount of time, it can be problematic. The point is, again, I, I, I think that PWAs are falling off the shelf because they don't fit into what they try to do as first. So as their, their big priority is to keep their revenues in the App Store. This is okay. what they try to do. So they need to open it. The, the first thing is to open other App Stores. But from to, what to, I to, understood, they're also introducing this CTF thing, core, what, what is it? core technology fee. Like right, so they are they are adopting a monetization strategy similar to what Unity wanted to introduce, where you would where mm -hmm. large, large, um, large scale applications that are very popular have to pay a per install fee, even if they are free. Mm -hmm. um, to Apple, right? So which is not the, possible the business, with the PWA, yeah. Exactly, which is not possible with the PWA, right? So so what's the game plan here? Like the EU is forcing them to have alternate marketplaces and they complied with that at the condition that they are now charging everybody 
So even though they had a much better technology, they couldn't monetize this. So they ditched it so that they could at least consistently charge everybody for having to comply with the new regular new DMA reg, DMA regulation. Yeah. Am, I, am I getting this right? Like, is that is that does that make sense? Maybe yeah. yes. So uh, they, 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 it is not explicitly written some of that somewhere, but it looks sounds like. I mean, that's that. my that 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 that's this is not so my I, legal opinion. But, 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 but I have a, I'm I'm I have a second. To, I'm trying to understand. I have a second point, which is that. PWA, so of course, first of all, no, no, I have several points. So PWAs <laughs> could be installed on the, uh, um, so let's say there is this add to home screen proce procedure, and you could count this on some point in some form of, or you could do this in some form of trusted procedure as well. So you can say, um, for example, put uh, something into your manifest, which indicates that this is the app, this is the domain, it's valid, and you need to, you know, create, for example, a developer account to make that happen. That would be a, okay. a, a valid way to do that as well, and a valid way to, 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 to charge something for that as well. Maybe not as a small company because you said it's just for larger companies, but that right. would be a way as well. So the PWA is not just a website, it becomes an app. So you would have the, the capabilities of that. And the first priority was to fulfill the, the, the requirement of having alternative app stores. And they need the to do screen. that. So, yeah. So no, no, PWAs in, in general. In the EU, there are. No, no, not PWA. PWAs are not a specific topic. The PWAs is just a technical term. Um, mm -hmm. What they try to do is native apps out of alternative app stores. And this is their first priority. And I think that it yeah. is harder to install now PWAs and still keep the security because the underlying infrastructure was never prepared for this. And this is mm -hmm. the big point. And they just say, okay, PWAs are now the victim in the EU. It is basically like they, they don't actively try to mm -hmm. kill PWAs. What they do instead, they just let them die for a while, hopefully only. Um, just to keep the to, or fulfill the goals they actually have, because mm -hmm. PWAs don't bring them any money, but the App Store does. So they need to priority. This is just a triage. It is like a triage. The PWA got the X. It is like just like that. And, so, um, so if I'm really steel manning the case, it's it's basically in order for PWAs to function, the privacy, the data, the security APIs that the PIWA infrastructure exposes to the app has to use Apple's, iOS's custom hardened and high quality, high security WebKit implementation. So if you allow any apps to come onto the phone as a home screen app, as a home screen PWA, running on a different browser, there's a risk that they are running a less secure, non-hardened, non-WebKit, non-iOS compliant yeah. browser that might be very much unsecure or of questionable security or of unknown security, opening up basically uh, phishing attacks, social engineering, rootkit attacks onto the device itself without the user being aware. I think I think that's the reason they put into the official press yeah. release. Um, and it's re it is actually reasonable. It, it makes because... sense. It makes sense. But then but... why not provide the same level of functionality that they have inside their iOS WebKit implementation to the other browsers? Like because other you know most browsers are WebKit compatible. They are Chromium browsers to them. To, I mean to a large degree, and most of the web APIs are. Compatible, so 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 I'm thinking, why not secure it? Like, why not just? They have a lot of like high high level expensive APIs. Why not just provide? The you wouldn't you wouldn't violate. I, I don't think you would violate viol, viol, violate the uh, DMA if you would only allow PWAs to work in Safari, for example. That then we would have the state we just have right now, and they would update yeah. it later. So there there would be some workarounds at least to still make. PWA is an option. So they are working in 17.4 outside the of the EU. I think I think it does violate it. I think that's the problem. Is it? So yeah, I think I think they have a monopoly on browsers as well. And then in that case, it would overlap. I have to check. So I'm checking on Wikipedia. So the DMA applies for online search engines, online intermediation services, social networks, video sharing platforms, communication platforms, advertising services, operating systems, and cloud services. 
And I believe um, that the choice is expanded also to provisions that guarantees users free choice as regards browsers, okay. virtual assistants, or search engines. So I think sort of they can comply with the, with, the, with the platform part of DMA by saying, okay, in order for it to be secure, it has to be a Safari browser, but then that's an implicit monopoly when, you know, when, when Windows said that, oh, in order for you to safely browse on this tablet, you need to use Microsoft Internet yeah. Explorer or Edge or whatever was the default browser back then, which, which is, I think, what, you know, this whole problem started with Microsoft because they sort of had a sort of long-standing dominant stance on, no, if you're on Windows, you're using, using our browser period. And that's where this EU regulations really started to crack down on this kind of behavior. And I think that's sort of now backfiring into this arena where it would make sense on an iOS device to sort of have a sort of WebKit preference. But at the same time, you know, with Microsoft, the problem was the browser was actually the worst browser on the market and we were forced to use it. Whereas on the on the iOS, the default browser is actually pretty good compared to the alternatives. So, uh, Raul yeah. just said, uh, "Sounds like an excuse or polite way to force us to use forget about PWAs and use just native iOS apps, mobile iOS mobile apps." The point is, why is Apple then doing? Uh, they, basically, basically, they 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 have done so much good stuff in the last years towards the, the idea of in regards to fighting uh, data data protection yeah so yeah but but um, for Gen for pwas as well yeah so especially yeah. webkit was really pushing forward it seems if you weird that they would kill it like this is their brainchild mm -hmm. they invented pwas like why would they kill it only on the yeah, eu exactly that that was their first dream of of having web apps they they don't call it pwa because a google employee just coined that time so mm -hmm. this is one of those reasons they, they call it differently but uh, we're talking about the same matter so um yeah okay it's i don't 5 know PM. It's 5 p.m. Let's go. Let's code. And um, I'm I'm going to go in the background and uh, check if we missed any messages. I go in the background as well. So, Camilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, coding my first PWA life. Hey, Camilla, exactly. have, you, have you coded in PWAs working with Adrian? No, I've been present. Like, Adrian showing me around, telling me what it is to do for the different apps, like checking the code base. But for me, I've never coded actually like PWA. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. now um, I need to quickly sort everything so that it last pleases time, everyone. Last time you doxed yourself, so please don't show your email this time on screen. <laughs> I already closed it. I, I was learning out of that. You know? <laughs> so um, let's quickly take a look. I have a different browser here because the other one does have too many implementations. I don't want to show. Uh, Raul, I saw your comment. Um, we, um, unfortunately, we can't do anything about the blurriness. The blurriness is an encoding issue because we're streaming live. Uh, the faster Adrian moves his mouse, the more the blurrier it gets. Mm, oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's an encoding issue. Okay, so let's let's quickly go to the um, if I can type that. So this is the, the version you can actually take a look at, but um, that's actually just so for, for, for first of all, what is that? This is not a real app. This is just a private project of mine. I've used to test some things with maps, with uh, geolocations. And instead of doing that in production, I tend to create little side projects. And I had a little vision that I want to actually use that for, for me personally to track uh, images with my phone and create stories out of that and um, save the images and do some API stuff later on. I never did that. So it's just a map where you can place some images at the moment. This is mm -hmm. what you can do. So what we have here is, again, the service worker. And I l later show how we actually make the update again and then what happens and how we do that. And uh, we have here several APIs used, which is, first of all, the index DB API, which is still my favorite ver uh, thing of, of storing data locally. So we have several storage types, right? Local storage, it's session a, storage. So it's a, it's a NoSQL database that has a sort of... It's a key value store, actually. It's a key value store, yes. Yeah, so it's yeah. a key value store which with a quite generous 
amount of data that you can store in it. It's persistent yeah. and you can query it in ways that you would expect from a NoSQL database. So you can query it by mm -hmm. key, by you, key. Can query it, you can query it by key, you can query it by collection, right? So you mm -hmm. can see there in the media folder, Adrian has collections. Um, you can run the normal operations on it that you would expect mappers, filters, reducers, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. And uh, so for everyone who, who, who who, who, who worked with that, uh, that, that kind of stuff before is probably familiar with that. For everyone else, this is actually the tab you need to have open if you mm -hmm. create PWAs in some form of sense. So for example, down here, we have this uh, background sync, background, uh, actually background sync, and uh, um, pushing notifications. So this, those are the APIs where you can debug things. Those, for example, will, won't work in one week anymore on iOS mm -hmm. devices because they are only working there if you have it added to a home screen. So, um, okay. So first of all, then this is, this is basically the thing. And we have here another next to the service worker. I just showed, we have here some, um, uh, some manifest. I just, uh, this is probably not a full one, but, um, there, the manifest file is just a JSON file, which is in the end, the stuff which defines how the app should look like on the uh, on the device how, that it can be installed in which orientation it shall open um, some stuff like the colors here the, the, the images display, you provide the exactly yeah. so this this is what you this is the second part you need technically to actually create this and if you have this in place you should have something up here which installs the app which is in in i don't know why it isn't here but in, 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 in Chrome, there is here a little install icon, then you can install it actually, uh, yeah. which isn't here available somehow. I don't know. This is, um, this is now, um, I you're think one of the first Edge. people I see that use Microsoft teams and Microsoft edge on, uh, on this is just for debugging Chrome. purposes, but I, I don't want to open my <laughs> Chrome browser. This is, I know, point. I know. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> let's, 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 let's take a look what this then actually is. So, uh, what we have here is a little. PWA, which um, implements a um, uh, the map we box. Have a, we have a we have a yeah. comment from Rasul uh, that we've missed because it didn't pop up on our chat. Uh, Rasul mentions I implement push notifications, uh, biometric fingerprint, OTP, uh, and navigation and more on PWAs. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. There's there's even more uh, NFC, Bluetooth, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Contactless uh, payment. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so what we have here is map and geolocations. I already said that it's okay. Probably we see that here. Permissions on the side. Settings. Uh, yeah. Lo mm -hmm. Location. I ask for. I don't know exactly. That is strange, but it should be here. You're not a native. Microsoft Edge users. So. Ah, location allow. It's, uh, it's it was too obvious. Sorry, uh, it's allowed. So um, and th there should be my location. I hope that is there, but it's not at the moment. So maybe I'm reloading the page real quick. It's somehow not showing the location. Oh, there it is. So um, no, it's not. This is. I don't think it's my location right now. I'm not here. Um, there is a possible way to force that, but I don't know in the browser how it's actually sensors i think then you can say location override berlin and nice. then you can then you can say i'm in berlin now Cute. um and um this is then actually uh, your your position um we have several apis inside there which is actually um, for example how good the, the 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 signal is we have just a 2d signal not a 3d signal which just um shows us that um we are probably uh, not having real geolocation data. It's probably more something like IP location, um, so IP location, Wi-Fi location, so something like that. From, exactly. Yeah, from IP, uh, so uh, from otherwise, from you would have a 3D platform. here up, up there. That would that's already possible. I have probably in, locating you to the closest cell tower and then putting you on a random intersection. What is interesting here as well? This was just a testing switch. Um, this is the wake thing. I forgot. This is a wake lock. I, I forgot how the API is called. If you activate this, um, your phone would not sleep anymore. So it would just stay open until 
uh, probably your battery screen. is down to 5%. The screen, don't want, yeah. the screen lock API is yeah. this called, I think. Um, I activated this, I deactivated this. This is just for me for testing purposes, but it's interesting to see you can just use it by JavaScript. There's and nothing worse than having a phone plugged in and you're debugging it and it, and it, and it <laughs> closes, closes and you have to <laughs> retype your pin every 30 seconds. So now we test uh, what I wanted to test uh, beforehand in the other one. This is the network thing. Um, we just know going offline and we are still here. Um, I can still navigate. I can still, as you see, they are, they are basically not working here. Those, um, those, those calls. And now I'll make the extreme test. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we are still, okay. Location is, uh, uh, this is a little bit awkward. You need to, um, this, the location is not persistent, but, um, okay. Of course I don't have the map data, but everything you've already visited on the app is still available. So I'm still, I'm not online now. So if I just move to some location here in, in, in Great Britain and I just put an image here, for example, this is another function I quickly, um, I need some image here. So the image is now stored here at this point and now I go online and in other apps we use, those images would now be synchronized step by step with background sync to the server. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I, when I when I reload the page again, I would um, then have every data again. So what so you can context, do I'm, for context, yeah. if I was doing if I was scanning some kind of package, if I was delivering somebody's mail and I had to scan it, if I lost connection, the device would remember that I scanned it. And then when I re re reconnect uh, with my cell tower or with my Wi-Fi, then I would sync it to, the, let's say, to Amazon. Central service. Exactly. So uh, what's here as well is the um, custom orientation. You, you see that? Uh, yeah, this is awkward. That's, uh, the, that's the accelerometer, <laughs> at least, or at least it's trying to figure out how to. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit hard to move that around. But if you do that, you can see that the um, that you have the orientation as well, which is quite cool. Um, so those are the features. So those are not specifically PWA features. So those features don't make a PWA, but you can just see what a PWA can use without yeah. having a bridge to the native device. Yeah. So those are just web native features, which is kind of cool. Um, so what we have as well is, for example, I just put an image here now. I upload, I take a look if I hopefully have it still. I hope. My, my, why is my desktop empty? I haven't deleted files there. Um, size, um, a large file. Ah, I don't have one now. That's, I had it on my desktop. I don't know where the file is. Um, so the point is I, I just do it with another file now. Um, I just had a 20 megabyte image. I just use now this one, which is way smaller. Um, and the point was that we, we saw here, then uh, a spinner, sorry, I don't have that image right now, I don't know. Uh, we had a spinner here um, and in background, um, this, this image was reduced in a service worker. I just show it in a second, all in the, in the, in the, um, in the, in the ID as well. And um, the point is that 20 megabytes in the main thread of your browser will basically freeze the browser, no matter how strong your machine is or your device is. It is basically frozen. So you need to wait until the image is actually reduced and then stored to index DB that you can use your phone again. It's like a lock. And you can just do that by, um, by using the same functionality inside a web worker, which starts a process inside the browser in another thread, which means that this thread doesn't block the main thread. If you, you, even if you do some kind of video editing or something like that, you can do that inside there and then move it back uh, with it. It's a little bit like your iframe. You have a post message and stuff like this. You can basically pass a message back to the, um, to the main thread that it's done. Mm -hmm. And you can take a look at the index DB at this ID and fetch the image there. So the download. So you, have, you, you, you go in with a 20 megabytes image and um, just receive in the main thread just a down sample thumbnail of that, for example. And you can use it and you just have a, a loading screen right here. This is a little bit awkward that I don't have that right now. Um, but uh, Adrian, this for, is our, for our viewers who might not be familiar with 
the distinction. Um, is the web worker the yeah. same or similar as a service worker? No, it's a totally different thing. The service worker is a proxy between you and the internet. So basically between the website you're running and the internet. And its the main, main job is to um, make sure that the incoming and outgoing data is somehow is processed. That yeah, the it's, it's exactly the the update process, caching, caching strategies, this kind of stuff. That's the web worker work. is web work is actually so. Let's 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 be a bit practical here. So, um, let's say image processor. This is a web worker. So don't mm -hmm. make a before Dennis is yelling at me again. Thank you. So, <laughs> so this is a web worker. It is a file in this. Um, in this case, it's TypeScript inside the next project. Um, so we have some responses here. So uh, what we're doing here is we have the original, the image, which is actually meant to use, and the thumbnail uh, with an ID. The ID is that ID I use as a handle to store the data inside the IndexedDB or file system API if you really want to use it. Um, you already have uh, height and width. This is very important if you don't want to have uh, jumping UIs, you you need to know how large the images actually are, and you the have the so it yeah, yeah exactly, and you have the MIME type as well. So this is basically stored. Then we using or I use Jimp in this case to to make the image manipulation, and I um, upped a little bit for testing purposes how much memory you can use in um, in your RAM. Uh, this is very important as well to consider because an image which is opened to edit is is large it is like mm -hmm. up to gigabytes of data yeah. um, so you need to this is the reason why it basically freezes and um so what we have here is basically um <laughs> great yeah um having uh i don't know exactly what maria db media sorry maria db media db okay what i'm doing here is using local forage to uh, have a good access to index db i hate Doing index DB by yourself. This is the so native so, API oh, is, is, so, is horrible. It's, it's so, so 2000. It's it's very it is, 2000. no, it's it's, it's not okay. It's, hell. It's, it is like nice. like using Ajax manually. It's like yes. no, no, yes. you don't it's want to do that. Uh, what you have here is basically a version control for the for the for the uh, index DB. You can create an instance. Yeah. Uh, you can say instance of media. I just show it. Then it's a version yeah. four. Uh, in the beginning, I was misunderstanding version. <laughs> it is basically um, it, it, you can make. Um, migrations. This is quite cool. So if you have a version it's a, it's five, schema, you can add migrations. Schema, schema version. Exactly. And when we take a look at this one, we, application, then index DB, we have media here. We see this is the version and we see what's inside here. So yeah. key one, for example, oh, I have I added some images. So those are the new images I have and they are inside here stored as a base 46 blob in this case, uh, fully qualified. Um, and then what I'm doing here, and this is the point in the web worker still. So this, first of all, is an isolated file, which means that this file is basically a standalone worker. This does not have other files. It is not really using something in st uh, except dependencies like Jimp or local forage in this case. But it is isolated. So there is not like extra logic somewhere else. Um, so what we have here, we have in the file. So e-data file, which means that we getting um, data from somewhere e is, am I blind? File? No, e is, a, is the parameter on line 38. Yeah, message event. Ah, no, okay, 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 good, good. Um, so we're basically getting a file type. Mm -hmm. So the stuff we basically getting from the input field of the HTML, and we then start to process it. We create a buffer, uh, we read the buffer then with jump, and mm -hmm. we then clone the image, we do some stuff, uh, we do some some resizing here, downsampling, um, we're thumbnail. creating the, the thumbnail, then we convert it to base 46, then we store it actually in the index DB. Um, mm -hmm. And um, then in the end, and this is the interesting part, we talking with the main thread again. So we're telling the main thread that we want to post message uh, the media data just um, basically uh, back to the main thread. Does, so the does, main th does, the, does the main thread and the service worker share memory in any way for those who are not familiar with this? Uh, oh, sorry. Um, what do you mean by that? 
um, how can the main thread and the service worker share data? Well, what is com? I know you can't define a variable and import a file and then have it magically be available. Like it's not compiled to the same destination, right? So it's a, it's it's a different entry point. The service worker, the web service worker, worker has is the ser- file. Yeah, so the, the service the, worker so, is not so is not so part of your pass, app. They can pass messages between them. Yeah, and there are certain data types that are shareable, basically very very low level uh, byte arrays and similar or streams mm-hmm. or resources or resource handles. Um, what about IndexDB? Is IndexDB the same IndexDB on each of yeah. them? And then yeah, yeah, yeah. They are still they they, they 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 running in the same context, but yes. it is like several uh, different threads. So this is, for example, um, how you call it in the main thread. You create yes, a new okay. worker. For those for those who are watching, this is not one giant Next.js app. There's the Next.js app. That's the main app, and then the service worker is a separate app, and the web worker is a third app. It, it's a it's a third standalone JavaScript entry point. Mm-hmm. So for example, we, we instance here a new worker, we set it to state, I'm not sure if this is, uh, I would do it like this again, but um, it is like that here in the app. Oh, wait a second, then we have the worker here, the state, and then we mm-hmm. see how we actually do that. So this is a this is a hook actually, so a callback in a hook, um, which- You set the state based on the messages you received from the worker. Exactly. So we were waiting here for a post message and then we handle something um, exactly with that. We're handling the error on the message itself. Uh, here is it, sorry. On message, we basically say that uh, we shall process this image and mm-hmm. uh, the process is basically what we're then providing as a processor. Um, yeah. So long story short, this is basically just a way to instance or offload this stuff of doing something with images which can be let's say very exhausting for the machine in because from the, your main thread into another thread and receive the, the results thread, because the main thread i'm assuming is single threaded right it's a yeah. single threaded javascript dom context mm-hmm. and the same thread that would be transpiling an image in javascript is exactly the same thread that is necessary to re-render react so you can't do both at the same time, right? So if you image resize, your screen freezes, or if you have a lot of image paints or you're scrolling through a lot, your image resize will take much longer and consume more memory. So you're separating these two things out, you make them asynchronous, but that requires the service work, the web worker infrastructure for them to be able to basically have a message queue to share between each other to, to communicate. Exactly. So again, if we say we want to have a new image here, then I can say, let's give me a new image. Maybe I find something which is larger. Give me a second. We have, I don't know. Um, I have a question. So if we have several uh, workers, like service workers, then we have like several threads, right? And they would be running like parallel to each other. Yeah. Or, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 parallel. So every every worker is a new thread, which is okay. the reason why you need to, of course, um, you should start to limit it if you try to parallelize it a lot, because yeah. every worker does have an overhead, which is just you know it's an instance. It does have overhead, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you need to um, think about the way you scale basically your application. So um, yeah, this is what I can say. So. Mm-hmm. Any, but if there are any questions regarding web workers, please ask. I'm checking. I'm mm-hmm. checking in the background. I'm chatting a little bit uh, in, in the background with our with our guests. And then let's so take a look at the, the 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 wake lock. Uh, mm-hmm. Was it wake lock? Wait, wake lock. It's actually I have a state here, so this is already something where we can work with. Um, I'm I'm not prepared, so uh, wake lock. Let's let's take a look. Normally I have headers. wake lock button. So we have a wake lock button here. Um, so there is wake lock. So we have a wake lock request here, which means we ask the navigator if the navigator does have wake lock implemented. This is a point of progressive web apps. You don't know what you actually have in form of capabilities on the device you run the device, um, which means that you you actually need to ask before you uh, use something. 
um, this is something you should do to make it resilient. So we have here, in this case, a wake lock thing. Um, so asking for if wake lock is available, and then we go in and say, give me a wake lock. Um, I needed to type, uh, uh, to have it typed like that in this case. Then I request wake lock for screen. I, to be honest, I forgot what it actually was, but there were several options, I think, what you can do. No, actually, I don't have an autocompleter here. So your request for the entire screen, I think it is limited uh, to the um, to, to some degree. And then you basically say Weglog is activated. So this was my test to run it. And this is actually the button here. And now I bas yeah, I don't know exactly if that does have an effect now on my Mac. So I would go away and there was would not be a home screen, so, so basically a lock screen anymore. I never tested that, but I know that it's working actually on the, um, on the browser version. And what we have here with a 2D thing, I need to take a look. Um, if use geolocation. So when I work with geolocations, I don't forget how, watch position. So this is how I handled that actually as far as I see. So um, we have the same here, asking again if we if we get geolocation data, and then I ask the browser or the API to watch my position, um, enable high accuracy, that's very important. And um, this is basically, um, if, if you want to, I tested it actually out in the field, the app a lot. So when, we, when I was on a hike or something like that, I tested how PWS are actually usable out there. Uh, when, when you have um, those things. And um, it is a little bit like if you don't enable this, you get strange problems with your app. So you need to do this, especially when you are in energy saving mode, nothing is really working with geolocation. So um, just if you do something- Otherwise, if you're, if you're out in the wild, it will just try to pinpoint you between two cell towers or three cell towers. And in the, in the mountains, it'll be wildly inaccurate because you're in a very high range cell tower and it will just be all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we have the geo state here. Um, there we have the labels of 2D and 3D. And this is about, ah, yeah, yeah. 3D was uh, latitude, longitude, and altitude is 3D. And only two are 2D. Um, and the point is, um, when you have 3D, you know you are on geolocation. If you have 2D, you're most likely not, you are on IP location or Wi-Fi um, thing. And there was, use geolocation, was this this was No, sorry, this one. Um, I think that was inside this file somewhere as well, or it was a little bit simpler. I can't remember. So I, I, I remember that I tested it on this website. This was a file I was, um, I was, I don't have any shortcuts for this on my MacBook. We we believe you, Adrian. Okay. Could we look into more of what's going on with GraphQL or maybe how you deploy it? We have about thirty minutes left. Oh, okay. What, what so, else uh, would you like to demo? Actually, so, if we if we put it out to our your live audience, because most of you are still here, um, what would you like to see? Like which part of PWA, mm -hmm. the tech stack, the technology, the pipeline, the coding, which part interest you please keep in mind that we have a, about a two minute delay between chat and the live stream on your screen um so type in chat whatever you want yeah. to see now we have a real pwa app in front of us if you have a question adria can show you immediately what it looks like in code if it's if you can um and we continue from there um where did you deploy this i, I can see that it's on story storyfly.app story what kind fly, of ecosystem? Yeah. Uh, story story fi dot app um where where is this ecosystem sabrina says from youtube the pipeline please i i briefly saw a digital ocean logo there um and oh, please don't dox yourself really ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so, so. <laughs> yeah this is you my know? private account all good okay. all good okay so um, <laughs> i can show everything on this account um so i i i really love um uh, I really love DigitalOcean, uh, and we, went, we, we will make a show about that as well. And yeah. the reason for that is um, that it's extremely easy to host from a static web app up to a microservice architecture, everything you want, without having deep or without a necessity of having deep ops knowledge. So I have quite 
deep ops knowledge, but I use it to make it possible to use it uh, to, let's say, to, to, to have our applications and our platforms used by everyone in our company. Mm -hmm. So which for means that you don't know, for those of you who don't know, digital ocean aims to be the more sort of cost optimized alternative to AWS. Yeah, for nine, web. nine euros. <laughs> yeah, nine, nine dollars. No, it's actually just apps. testing stuff on site here. So um, normally, there's something around uh, three to um, three to four digits. Um, still, so it's it's not like cheap or something like that, but it's cheaper than the alternatives. It's uh, but um, it is a little bit different with the app platform. So what we see here is the app platform, and I chose it because I basically um, can assemble components here, which can be Docker containers, serverless functions, uh, static web apps, databases like Postgres, Redis, or something like that, and create an app out of that. And the entire ecosystem, what we know, so there's Kubernetes basically as a foundation, but you don't see it. It's an abstraction of Kubernetes. And this is, is what using, I really like. Is it using Terraform underneath something? Compatible? I don't know. I don't know. You can't use Terraform. Uh, you can use Terraform. Sorry, there's a Terraform provider as well, but, but we don't use it. it. Right? No, you no, we don't use it. Use okay. it. Okay. So um, let's, 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 let's quickly so do something. Like, so it's like creating a Docker config, a Docker Swarm config or something similar. I mean, I know that's a little bit more archaic way of uh, or organizing things, but that's basically what you're doing, right? You give, you create a service. It has a Docker image. You connect it up to a a managed service online in the app, in the yeah. app spec, and then you hit deploy, and it synchronizes itself. Exactly. So can I can I switch? Okay. So mm -hmm. um, I would like to quickly change something in the app, and then we take a look at uh, how it looks like. Yeah. Where can it, where can I change something? I open that one and. No, not, not that one. I open this one here, and we have here upload, and I I will rename the button. This is all I do okay. now. This is okay. just uh, so. Let's take a look if we if we find that somehow. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's nearly a year ago. Um, let's take. We'll a find look. it. We'll find it. I make it differently, so I probably find it by this. No, I don't. Ah, come on. Is it an image? Is it the component? Is the button a com component? I have, I haven't opened that one for quite a while now. So I think ah, add button. This is moment. Moment was the context. Okay. Um. So. Um, we have the button here. We have create a moment. This is the moment button. Moment capture. No. We're close. We are not We're close. close. Can we inspect? <laughs> can, we, can we go from the other, other direction? Can do you have a plugin in Microsoft no, we, we Edge? I, I, I used I used the hit media button. The so I have it. So. That, that's it. Okay. Nice. Good. Let's. <laughs> there it is. So, um, how shall we call it? Tell me something. Pair programming. Uh, download. No. <laughs> Send. Save. Nah. Hochladen. The <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Speichern. <laughs> Okay, using semantic commits. Mm -hmm. That's my fault. So I basically just do it now as a push. And what happens now is pretty a pretty easy thing, which is quite cool. I just... Did you I actually hope. push the file? I did. I didn't see you select. Okay. Um, yeah, you did, but you didn't build. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I know there were no tests. We don't have time, right? Yeah. So this this is this is not best practice. What I've just done. I just wanted to show you how the PWA is working and not okay. how the thing is working. So what we see Perfect. now here is um, the CI/CD pipeline, which is built in. Um, we're seeing uh, 
what, what happens here in the background that it's actually building right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to wait well, here. What are, we, what are we looking at right now? Are we looking at all the logs from all the containers combined? Are we looking at the master container? The build yeah, container? We, we, we've seen here the component, which is mm -hmm. the component client. There's only one component. So this is uh, basically okay. the build log inside the container. Uh, which is building the app. So I, let's, let me quickly take a look what we're actually building here because I forgot it. Um, we have. Yeah, what, is this, what does the build configuration look like in the project? Open too many files. So this is actually the file. So this is a mm -hmm. infrastructure's code file, um, which is called the app spec in the DigitalOcean universe. It's fu it functions a little bit like a Docker Compose file, but um, so s same look and feel. Um, Let's scroll down a little bit so we don't see your 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 off token. It is uh, this. This is no token. This is the secret. So you can't do something with that. So no no problems there. <laughs> um, okay. okay. <laughs> it is not finished, so you can't do anything. All good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> no. No. All good. Um, what we have here is um, the static website. So no, not let's start. We define it by having a domain here. You know, we just say, mm -hmm. I want to have this domain, so I need to make sure that the DNS is working. We have environment variables. Um, I've just defined them. Um, this is actually a little, this is already always enabled, so we can ignore that. We have the, the possibility here to configure a basic ingress configuration. You might note that from, uh, from, from Kubernetes. So you can just say that uh, with that pass, you open that component. Uh, which is then the app. So you could have, for example, a Docker image as, as well running there. Um, the name of the app itself. So this is just for, for managing purposes, the region where you want to deploy uh, deploy the app to. So this is one of the point. The app platform is not able to um, do multi-region set setups. If you want to do this, you need to do it manually on Kubernetes. Multi-region in the sense that there's multiple availability zones and you're replicated across them or ex ex do you yeah exactly what but what does what it does have is uh, um, basically cdn so it does use cloudflare cdn but it's not like or stateless, um, or stateless exactly stuff. but it's but it's not like in multiple regions you just have it available via cdn in multiple regions so this is a little bit of a, of a thing to know about um then we define i've defined it as a static site so this is just enough for today um, i basically give what shall happen inside the build container, which is uh, the npm run export. I think I have inside the export build and export of Next.js in, uh, built inside. So this is a combination. Mm -hmm. um, you could have done it inside here as well with just doing it as a, as a yeah. concatenation. Yeah. Uh, environment Slack is you just say uh, what you want to do it actually um, for. It's basically a Node.js environment you want to have then you tell um for example this is um, this is the, my repo i used for this to test and uh, this is a setting for the ci cd pipeline where i just say that um please deploy on every push i make Mm -hmm. um, this is what we just saw. I just pushed and it starts to build the app. Mm -hmm. um, we have it from the main branch. Your, I'm assuming your DigitalOcean droplet or your account is then connected with GitHub. Yeah, with you need GitHub to do this account. beforehand, of course. Of course. Do you have yeah. any GitHub actions to enable that operation? It doesn't, nothing to do with GitHub actions. Okay, so you don't need any kind of interoperability to the handshake or to do any kind no, of. No, it's not. It's only you. You need to, you, you. You go basically into. I can show it. It's not one second. There it is. You need, when you want to do this, you need to one time um, connect those two things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This is then here in in that area Perfect. where you can basically say that um, was it here. That seems to be the one. It, if if you create if you, it, I think. If, if you, you if weren't you, connected, you would see it. Yeah, if you create a new app, so it is like this. Mm -hmm. You create a new app, then you say GitHub, and Perfect. then you can thank one you. time um, just uh, tell what what very, those very report. Clear. Thank you for thank you for demonstrating. Exactly. So um, then the last things. Uh, so ex actually, this is everything which happens inside the container and mm -hmm. uh, inside the the CI/CD process. And let's take a look what happens in the CI/CD process right now, which is. No, what what failed? Nothing, Nothing failed. We got. We got. We got the point. 
So we, we are deployed. Here is normally you have those 10 to 20 services yeah. here in the normal app. Like cache, web exactly. server, load exactly. And you see what happened. Uh, you see what build pack was used to actually build that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. you, you, you have some, some additional logs for, uh, let's say, post jobs, for example. Full monitoring, if, full observability. You were getting yeah. an email if the build failed and you went home and you hit yeah, post. Yeah. If, you, if you want to run, for example, Cypress as a post job after deploying, um, you mm -hmm. can do that as well, and you get the logs of that as well, which is quite cool. You have the insights. Uh, actually, there are less, not not many insights for static web apps, uh, mm -hmm. but this is um, this is interesting as well to see. Uh, but mm -hmm. the the point is, it is it is deployed now. So what we've done is basically running a rolling update. So the app platform is only able to do rolling updates, which means that um, for everyone who does know, not know what a rolling update is, it's a Kubernetes term or Docker Swarm term as well, um, yeah. for orchestrators, where you basically have your old version running and you're spinning up a new version, which is not yet online, not yet exposed to the yeah. users. And the system is waiting until this one get healthy, which means that it's on some point or the other, you can define it, says I am healthy. And in that case, when it indicates that, basically it starts to switch out those both containers and the the the, the new one is basically then exposed and the other one is basically It's very deleted. similar to a, yeah. a canary deployment under the under the condition that your the image that you're building has to be um, has to be isolated to the degree that it doesn't require exclusive locks on any kind of shared resources, like a database connection, or you can't have one of something while both of them are running temporarily. Um, so this now, if I had it installed on my phone, actually, if I go to Story Storyfy app on my phone, on my iPhone, I'm, I'm doing it right now. I'm, I'll do it right now. Yeah. Then I would now get, uh, no, not Spotify. Why, why did you name it this, Adrian? I thought it's it was auto, it would, it's would auto, be a good idea, right? It's auto auto correcting. <laughs> it's story bi dot app. I'm it's not actually resolving for me. Maybe I mistyped it. So this is basically the simulator version. We can just oh, I didn't uh, mistype it. No. We can just display that one. Maybe interesting as well. So first of okay. all, I allow it here. This is um, that I can use that stuff. Mm -hmm. I enter my son's first name in a short version. Then I'm here. I, I so got, I, I, got, I got it on my phone. And uh, I can display it uh, now. In a second, I display the, the local storage issue uh, again on this phone. But now let, let's see quickly here, just to complete that update process. So for those we, who don't know, you open your you open your phone. You hit the you hit the up arrow button. You know the up arrow button is where all the important website functionality hides, like search, this one. like find on page. Yes, at that button. You hit that button, and you hit add to home screen, and you give it a name, and you add it, and now you can see that Storyfy app. The app is now on my home screen. Where's my finger? There's my finger. All right, so now it's on my home screen, and now when I open it. It's Adrian's app that he just deployed. And I give it permission. And I have an exception because you probably you, you probably need some data that I a, a beta key that I don't have. Probably. I don't know why it's not working for you. It's um, working so... now. There we go. <clears throat> so th okay. this is the PWA. This is the PWA that Adrian just deployed on my phone. This is the first time I installed it. We didn't this is unscripted. So we have Hochladen here. This is uh, already installed in that Hochladen. And what we have, have here now is upload. Oh my God, what happened? Um, the reason is we, the, the service worker here is still waiting for, um, for the update to be installed. So it is already prepared for installation, but it's not yet the current version. So we, yes. this is this what indicate. I can press skip waiting or I have here just a and this is something I used from another, so this is in German as well. Your, New version if installed. You're, if you're yeah. like me, this is your normal state of your Gmail app in the browser. Because if you're like me, you have your browser open 24 seven and you never turn off your computer and you've yeah. had your Gmail tab running for seven months. So you have a four years so old Gmail version. That's so it's so it's waiting. So it's waiting for the update to happen. And every now and then Gmail will be done. <laughs> with your bulk you, you could force that say, 
you could force <laughs> and you that. You just say, I'm going to update myself now. Bye bye. <laughs> so if you want to make sure that uh, just for, let, let me quickly explain. So I have a little, little, little modal toast here down there. If I press the button here, it is the very same like this one. So this is basically the same thing. It is just reloading the page and we are on a new version. Um, the, Neuladen, right. And um, the point is you could do something like to be to be sure that you give the user like 10 minutes to do that. And after the 10 minutes, even if the page is not reloaded, something like that, you will force to make this update. So just yeah. in case you want to do that. But let's let's quickly press on the button. So we open the app again. Mm -hmm. And uh, take a look at this one. It's hochladen now as well. So we have installed the new version. Awesome. And um, what I wanted to quickly um, show very here good. is, I, I want to commend you. This is a very good demo, Adrian. So this mm -hmm. is very well prepared, a really cool project. So thank you so much for. This is totally not prepared. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm even no, somewhere. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm serious for a live stream. You were coding. You were in the editor. You were deploying to production. It went, it went smooth. We made a change. Like this is very well prepared. I have. I really appreciate the effort you put into this. So let's take a look. We have. A graphical bug with aspect ratio, but we have an image here now. So if I, <laughs> if I, um, if I zoom out, up, then we have this image. And what I want to show you now is that this is the add to home screen version I mentioned in the beginning of the stream. This is the installed PWA on a not yet updated iOS 17.2 because my 17.4 was suddenly simulator not working this morning anymore. It's broken. Um, so now I try to do this and uh, then I go back to my browser it and is I, with mouse. and, and now I take a look at the browser version mm -hmm. and I, I zoom out and I don't find this image. I don't, I just have some others here, but this is mm -hmm. not the same. Oh, there's actually some, those are the basic images. This is not the same image. So if we compare that to the other, mm -hmm. This one. app. You can I'm see it from the icon. This one actually has the app icon. The other one had the Safari icon in the top when he was switching apps. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by this is if I do something here now and I have I have it stored here and I would lose this version and I need to go next day on the browser version just to make it clear now, I lose mm -hmm. my data because this is a different local storage than the other app. So as soon as I have this little browser stuff here down there, it doesn't work anymore. This is a little bit of a problem at the moment. Um, okay. So Good. Any, any, thank you, because she requested that we see the pipeline. So thank you so much. Um, Muhammad do we have any more questions? Mohammed has a comment um, mm -hmm. about the web worker and service worker differentiation that we were looking at earlier. Uh, Muhammad mentions the idea is contactle contextless communication, in which raw data is cloned in the worker thread and there is no shared data directly. So the, the point is that there is no shared memory directly between mm -hmm. the two contexts of the yeah. two JavaScript apps. Because generally you would do something weird, like do a network request for Ajax or do a cross frame, a cross frame data sharing by just course. And that would share memory, right? But this is not the same kind of uh, sharing data sharing because it is contextless. You can't the two windows don't see each other. The question at hand is how we can develop a PubSub approach, which is available on Android, that enables secure communication. For instance, we need to communicate with huge actions, user log to store a log of a user in IndexedDB and user authentication to work with WebAssembly. How can we achieve this securely? Well, I would I would argue that inside a browser, um, you don't have real isolation. So you can uh, see the stuff which is going on inside the web worker as isolated, but it's not like that um, you can really um, disconnect your main thread. So um, the security layer is provided by the post message um, event handler. You know, so you, you, you can only, this is the same with iframes, you know, um, you, you, you basically are only able to pass a message and you, uh, you can even, so if you, if you, if you provide you can larger you can blocks, verify, you can even. You can verify that it is a trusted source, that there wasn't any man in the middle, uh, attacks or shenanigans going on cross, 
cross message. You, you have that if you have blobs, um, so resource blobs, I, I forgot how they were called. If you have them inside the web worker, you can pass the ownership to the main thread. Actually, you need shareable, to do it. shareable resources. I think shareable resources, shareable right? Resources. So this is basically everything which is if not you primitive. To, you need to if you go define to MDN, that. MDN .com and type shareable resources. You'll find it. I think that was the first version, but I basically not. Uh, I I in the very first version when I tried this, I, I haven't used I, it either yet. So I'm just. Yeah, yeah. I, I I wanted to transfer the entire image to the thread, which wasn't a great idea in that time, and I needed to make a shareable uh, thing to pass the ownership back. So this is then a security thing where you can do that, but it was way easier to say I just store it in IndexedDB and just give the reference yeah. so that the main thread can handle with the reference. It is way easier to do that like that. I guess what Mohammed is referring to is that on on Android, if you put it in IndexedDB. Is it possible that somebody can just, you know, come in and some the, the owner of the device can just come in and start manipulating the 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 data that's inside the index DB or start if if you can open the browser and you have a console, you could do that, yes. Or start doing something malicious to it, or you know, like well, where, where is the boundary here? You know, because he did mention web assembly. So mm -hmm. I, I guess I guess the the ideal would mm -hmm. be that we would have the same sort of something very much approaching backend level security isolation for what you're doing in WebAssembly. And practically, I don't think that's possible. Practically, I think the user's data should should still remain in the user's context and it will be secure to the degree that the user's device is secure. Uh, th there, um, are, there are libraries out there which helps you to um to to um obfuscate or obfuscate data yeah. to um even keys you only get from the back end so you yeah. need to be online online to actually signal, signal works like that so that's exactly so that's there are ways to do that but it is a little bit more complicated it so quite in, more it, complicated. yes yeah yeah so if you do it like like i am here right now uh, you could just um uh, basically access um in, in the browser, you could access the thing. This is one of the points uh, why we want to have the PWA approach, because it is a little bit harder to actually get into the PWA um, with um, in, a, in a production way. There, there were some ideas in already where you basically, uh, once installed, you don't have a console anymore. This is um, this is one of those aspects, and this is the, the one of the reasons uh, the file system API was introduced because mm -hmm. the file system API is more secure. So you can't just get into the file system API um, and do something your, very easy your there. PW, is, your PWA has a context where it doesn't see other other apps files. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so this um, and and it's a little bit harder to manipulate the, the the file system API. It is more secure. There are um, the asynchronous and synchronous variants for, um, um, of that. And this is actually what I would prefer if if that would be stable already. But it was, it, it, let's say, it was a little bit awkward to use on iOS devices. So so we get, got away from that one. And um, in in production apps, we use basically encryption. So the data mm -hmm. inside IndexedDB is encrypted to make it harder to manipulate and read. You could delete it, but you can't really um, just get to the data and just do something if you don't exactly know what you're going to do with that. So um, yeah, there is potential to improve in my opinion. So because we are still working with a browser, but, and this is the same point, it is not a problem of PWAs. This is a problem of the browser space. So we need to, um, it is a little bit too open um, so um, it is still strange that you can just go to some mm -hmm. websites, banking websites or something like that and open the console. Um, mm -hmm. This is something you shouldn't be able to do. And this is something which is, in my opinion, still missing. And that would help us to create PWAs in a more secure way. But um, for most April, apps... Yeah, April sorry. also mentioned, you know, um, did you say StreamYard? You know, this was an hour ago. Uh, yeah. For context... StreamYard, Canva is a very good example. Like they are using something similar to PWAs and web with in combination with web workers where they're not JavaScript web workers, but they're WebAssembly web workers. So they're doing, I think in Rust or in C Sharp, no. which are the most common languages used for WebAssembly. Um, mm. They have a very native, a very native um, setup 
for image resizing, animations, etc. That then happens locally on your device. So your app, your, your Canva, ex basically on your mobile phone would have limited um, offline capability. So you wouldn't have to be online to resize an image, for example, right? So it happens actually in the background in a web worker of some kind. It has a service worker. It might not have offline capability for everything that it doesn't have. It doesn't have. I yeah. tested it already, but it does have a service worker. Yeah, but, but it does. Um, it, it does. It does resize things and perform certain animations offloaded in a separate web worker locally, right? So same thing with Descript. If you're using it, Streamyard that we're using now, the stream itself, like this, us streaming, is all happens in the browser. This is a browser app, which is amazing. You know, if you think about it, where desktop sharing, video encryption, separate video and audio tracks, comments, animations. Now that I click your name and your your comment and your 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 face pops up on stream. This is all happening in a browser app. Offloaded web workers are possible. We have our individual streams being offloaded in web workers right now as we speak because mm -hmm. it's a higher definition and it's a separate video track. Uh, so, and it's it's a beautiful orchestration of modern web technologies that mimic pure any perhaps even outperform um, what you would consider a native well, web app. If you know, if the company would have to hire separate iOS developers, Microsoft develop Windows developers, and Android developers, etc. Et yeah. So let's. I I just have four minutes left that I need to go. Um, so I hope I think, that I think helped, we can wrap up. Yeah, I think we can wrap. Up. So um, I hope that helped some of you out there. We had a quite large audience today um, for mm -hmm. our uh, things. Um, there are multiple ways to work with PWA. So the framework I just showed, it's actually from the tech stack I just showed is the tech stack we use for years. We refined mm -hmm. it. It works very well. Uh, we, we get very good web vitals with that. It is very fast. It's easy. It is stable. It's reliable. And uh, it does have its problem in the very beginning, but we basically got all problems out of the way and it's very fast to develop. But there are other approaches out there as well. For example, the approach of, of Mark van Erwin, who is going the pure way, which basically doesn't have any frameworks inside that. This is basically what the browser is doing. So if you prefer something like that, I know several people prefer that. Um, there are solutions for that as well. So you don't need a framework to build PWAs. It is just it makes it a little bit easier for you and have it more on the production scale level where you can really build. So. Um, it is a little bit like um, when you create apps for an app store, you are used to having updates, let's say every week, every some two weeks, something like that, not daily. And um, our users are basically coming daily to us and want to have daily updates. So we practice continuous delivery straight to the user. There is nothing in between, which means we need to be very rapid with the development. So even half-baked features are getting to the users and they are simply not displayed. And this is basically possible with PWA. So the entire idea of continuous delivery as well, we've been talking about quite often, is pretty much covered by the PWA idea. So it's you, you do it, as you saw, it is like that in production for us. We, we, we push to production and that's it. So of course it's a little bit more tested, automated tests, and there are no automated tests in this project, but um, this is it. So there is nothing in between, which is first of all, the great thing for developers and small companies, the bad thing probably for Apple because they don't have control what we're actually pushing there. So this is um, even if in the native app wrapper, um, just maybe as a last ex explanation, when you have a for app wrapper with, for example, capacitor, and you upload it to the native store, you still have the service worker inside. And even if Apple have approved it, you can basically switch the entire website after the review process. And this is one of the things Apple doesn't like about that. And I understand this, but this needs to be covered by a better review process upfront. Who is actually the person who's uploading? Is it a trusted company and all this kind of stuff? This is, I think, doable. And this is what the trusted web, um, the trusted web activity of uh, Google does. So there are so many automated tests and your application is constantly monitored that you can't make those changes without being blocked instantly. Um, 
So just wanted to say that I think we are on a good way. I think we should fight for PWA, but everyone out there again who is using PWAs today, make sure that the next week is not breaking your company. This is the first priority you have to do. And then let's go back to the old pace of PWAs. So going into with something like Capacitor is not a bad idea right now if you can save your business. So don't come to the point that uh, I hate Apple and no, no, it is, it is no, no Apple bashing today. So it is about saving your company, use what Apple provides you, and then in the next steps, take a look how we can return to the, to the standards as we are still right now. And as, as we show today, it works flu, flu, uh, fluidly. It's, it's, it's great. It's, you can use it like a real app. There's no difference if you use it um, on. I, I would give you that the reason why there's a beta key behind the app is actually because there is a key in behind I need to pay for the map usage and there's some free usage at the moment. And if I would give it away, I start to pay for this app, which I don't want to do. Um, but this is another topic. Okay. Um, thank you very much for listening today. I need to go quick now. Up, quick update. If you have to go, where can we reach you, Adrian? Can I show your banner, your overlay? Yeah, do it, please. A snack. Uh, yeah. So the, this is Adrian's platforms. You can find him here. He has a nice QR code. Gonna stay up for a few more seconds. There's the link tree at the bottom, which I'm very sorry for overlaying. There we go. Um, I haven't created an overlay yet. Camilla, where, where can we reach you? Oh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. You can reach me on LinkedIn as well. Name, surname, um, and you can find me on Mentor Cruise and the Crafting Tech Teams and OTJ um, newsletters on Substack. That's the ones below. Um, Two updates for tomorrow, uh, for today, actually. Uh, one, we have another banger stream here tomorrow. Test during development with React, with Nick Shoemaker. We have live coding. There's going to be a lot of talk about front-end architecture, how to make it testable, how to TDD it, how to test drive it, how to do acceptance tests. There's going to be some Cypress. There's going to be some unit tests. Um, Nick is a great guy. I can't wait. We have a lot of people signed up for tomorrow. So tomorrow is going to be a banger stream. I'm really excited about it. Chemistry seemed good. Prep was amazing. Um, Camilla dropped off again. <laughs> That's one thing. Uh, so if you haven't already, do let us know if you have any questions for Nick tomorrow, because it's going to be quite action-packed. Um, so there's that. And number two, we did have a um, after show coffee for the OTJ community members plan oh, for last week. Um, but last week was meant to be a shorter stream. Mm -hmm. And it, then it, we were meant to have the coffee. And today was meant to be a longer stream. And we moved the coffee to today. And we forgot that it clashed. And Adrian also got something urgent coming up. And I don't think it, it made the calendar. So I we will do, we will repeat it to next week. Yes, next I week, Wednesday, 1730 CET. We have the Our Tech Journey coffee. Yes. If you want to attend, uh, go to OTJ. So uh, maybe you can pass the link. Uh, I need to go now. The link is on the banner and at the bottom. So exactly. Join the community and you will get stuff. access. And then you can talk to us inside a meeting room. And we will be all there, all the regulars. And we will be discussing things. So next yeah. week, same time, 1730. After the show, we're yeah. going straight into meeting each other. The idea Thank you. is I need that... To go. You need to come. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> I don't press the end stream button now. No, don't, don't, I, I don't press it. the red button. Don't press I the red go, button. I just I'll go off stage. Bye-bye. I'll press the red button. Um, so the idea is a lot of you have commented that it's a bit high pressure being live on stage and being seen on stage yeah. and asking in comments. And maybe you have actually some questions that are of a private nature or at least in a way that cannot be streamed or cannot be broadcast or that it's uncomfortable broadcasting. So every now and then, we are now experimenting with this idea of having a coffee together for the OTJ community in particular, where we will end the stream 30 minutes earlier and then go into a VIP room with the link in the Circle SO. We won't record that one. And then you basically get to hang out with us and continue the stream a little bit with us, but also sort of expand it and sort of have like a more social structure. It'll be less presentation, less show, more social, more uh, sort of VIP room. If you're if you've been to conferences, it'll be they basically feel like a VIP room. Uh, it'll all depend on how many of you sign up and how many of you so showing show interest in it. 
and, and we have that planned for maybe once per month uh, as an experiment to give back to the OTJ community for those of you who are signed up on the Circle community. Um, yes, okay. and Raul, Raul called it. <laughs> so with that. Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Camilla, thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you so the... much, guys. I learned a lot. I'm very looking forward to my own project. But yeah, I have a lot of other stuff to learn right now. Oh, oh, awesome. So with that, I'm going to... I'm not going to do any clips today because we're bang on the bang on the clock, two hours. This is going to be a nice, clean ending. And I'll see you <laughs> tomorrow for React TDD on front for end. Sure. Elevate your music for a few minutes. Bye bye.